both gone. Probably using their heater watching television. No, they're back in their rooms. Uh oh, maybe they went to, no, they couldn't go to church yet. Ray Eby expected to spend his retirement years fly fishing and touring Civil War battlefields. But instead, Ray finds himself visiting Donna, his wife of 46 years, for up to eight oh, hours a day. There she is. She went to bed. Said, you want to go to bed? Huh? Don't you want to go for a walk? Wouldn't you like to go for a walk? Huh? Well, let's set you up. Huntington's disease, an inherited neurological disorder with devastating physical and psychological symptoms, has shattered the lives, homes, and plans of three generations of the EB family. Her first complaint that she gave to me was my right side and the left side don't bounce. They don't, it feels to me as though they don't match. And what do you talk, don't match? How can that be? You know? But that's what it was. She had symptoms that were very difficult. Her first was slurring, a very slight slurring of the speech. That was the first physical. Then it affected her walking. Once Donna needed full-time care, Ray found only a few nearby facilities willing to take Huntington's patients. With Donna's blessing, he chose Masonic Village. A month later, the E.B.'s 46-year-old daughter, Elizabeth, joined her mother. Best to describe it is, if you remember, DNA is a pattern, a strip of a web. And let's say you have A, B, C, D, E, and so on. Well, all of a sudden, with Huntington, you have an A, B, C, D, 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 D. Depends how many of those repeats are as to how severe the case is. The bad part is to diagnose it, everyone has different symptoms because you never know which part of the brain is going to become affected. There's the, that's, that's the problem. So it's very difficult to find out unless you have a family history. Don, we had no family history, but now we look back at it and her grandfather died of unknown causes, so did her mother. Okay, they thought it was cancer. But they never did an autopsy to find out for sure. It wasn't. You want me to, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I tried to get here for lunch and supper. I don't always make it. Sometimes things interfere. But um, at least I like to get here for supper. Because I don't like to see... Uh, Donna going to bed without eating her, eating something, and sometimes she would have done that if I wouldn't have shown up. So then, usually that's when we watch a movie or in the afternoon, go for walks down to the fish tank. Is a oh, a fan. Play. Play. Oh. What do you want? You want something? No. No. You're trying to talk to the fish. They want to do something. They want to tell me something. They want to express themselves or happy about something. And <clears throat> with Don particularly, when she gets happy and excited, then she can't talk very well. <laughs> so that's, that's frustrating. I most of the time feel helpless. All I can do is continue to do and a smile on their face is a nice reward. It's certainly the most difficult job I've had ever. Now they have a new drug too they're working on. It's uh, been used in insects and animals and it's a protein blocker that should cure the disease. It's in test right now out in UCLA in California in their medical center. Do you spend much time thinking about what could happen if, if there is a cure? Is that something you think about? Oh, I've thought about it, but we'll have to wait and that bridge crosses because we don't know how long will the recovery period be, this sort of thing. So it's, it's almost impossible to plan for it, but 
yeah, I'm I'm ready for it. <laughs> Put it that way. I'm not uh, totally uh, sure. I have a nice big apartment now where I'm at, and I moved to that one here when it came open because if Donna does get cured, I'll have room for her. So yeah, I'm I've been making some plans and thinking of it. I'm always hoping 